as always, I'm thankful for this opportunity that's allotted by the elders to speak to you tonight. Tonight's topic, I would like to look at being careful with God's name. And as always, I think with every speaker, usually something in our lives spark a thought or a Bible verse that makes us want to go deeper into it and usually develop a sermon out of it. Well, this came to mind, this lesson came to mind a couple of different situations that went on uh, in the past month or so. Uh, one of my friends sent me a video of this new, or I guess semi-new Bible that they came out with called the Gen Z Bible. And in this Bible, they took the scriptures and made it in Gen Z slang. And if you want to talk about blasphemous, the guy read just a couple of verses from it, and my jaw dropped just listening to those couple of verses. An excerpt from that uh, one of those verses was in Luke when the angel was talking to Mary, and this trans translation said, "You're a real one, and the top G is filling you." But this is how people talk about God and anything holy today. The second thing that came up that just a couple of days ago, actually, I was already planning on presenting this lesson and studying more into it. But in my powerlifting uh, group chat for our team, they I don't remember what they were talking about, but God got brought up. And then they started throwing around names for God, saying like the big dog or daddy God or stuff to this effect. And we all hear that people talk about the big man upstairs. So tonight I'd like to look at uh, several things of taking the Lord's name in vain and blasphemy. And to start off, I'd like to look at the third commandment of the law of Moses and how it was applied to them. Although we are no longer under the law of Moses, these principles are found in the New Testament and also apply to us today. When we think about these words in this lesson tonight and these various scriptures we're going to read, let us think about who God truly is. He is the beginning and the end, the almighty, the creator of all things. And he's the very one that fathered our spirits. So the third commandment in Exodus chapter 20 and verse seven, it says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. We see two parts in this commandment. There is the content of the commandment and the consequence of the commandment. So let's start off by looking at the content of the commandment. This is the first part of that verse. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. The, co the command is prohibited, just like the first two commandments. In that regard, for one to do what is prohibited is sinful. Remember the great commandment. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Deuteronomy 6.5. To take God's name in vain is to disrespect God instead of love him. We look at the name of God himself. The reference to God's name here is the name Yahweh or Jehovah. When Moses asked God what his name was on Mount Sinai, and who should he say that sent him? In Exodus 3 and verse 14, we read, And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say to the children of Israel, I am have sent me unto you. The name God, however, goes beyond the mere four letters in the Hebrew alphabet, which with which God's name is spelled. It is the concept of God, the great I am, that we are to respect. In essence, invoking God's name or any word which would refer to God is the concern in this commandment. More specifically, God's name was also invoked during oath-taking, and this command in essence states that if one is to use God's name in an oath, he better be prepared to keep it. In Numbers chapter 30 and verse 2 states, If a man vow a vow unto the Lord, or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceedeth out of his mouth. To use God's name in vain is to use it in an empty or meaningless way. The Pharisees and those that, of them that perverted this command to mean not to use the name of God 
Yahweh for any reason. They refused to utter God's name even in spiritual contexts. Scribes would attain new pens to write this word specifically or refrain from writing uh, in full characters. This is why many were upset when, with Jesus when he said unto, uh, and when Jesus said to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. John chapter 8, verse 58. He used God's name here, and on top of that, he claimed to be God. They took this as using God's name vainly and blaspheming the name of God. In Leviticus 24 and verse 16, it says, And he that blasphemeth the name of the Lord, he shall surely be put to death. And all the congregation shall surely or shall certainly stone him as well the stranger as he that is born in the land when he blasphemeth the name of the Lord shall be put to death. Those who refer to God in common speech also take God's name in vain. It is the taking of that which is holy and making it that which is common. In Haggai 2 and verses 12 through 14, it reads, If one bear holy flesh in his skirt of his garment, and with this skirt do touch bread or pottage or wine or oil or any meat, shall it be holy? And the priest said, no. Then Haggai, if then said Haggai, if one that is unclean by a dead body touches any of these that is uh, any of these, shall it be unclean? And the priest answered and said, it will be unclean. What he was saying here was if someone was handling a dead body, that made those people at that time, they looked at that kind of person as unclean. So if he was to touch something that was clean, would it become unclean? And the priest said, yes. People do the same thing when it comes to God. They take that which is holy and mix it with something that is unholy. It is defiling that which is holy. Think about this when taking the name of God and then mixing it into something that is regular or unimportant, something that you don't have much respect for. In essence, it makes God no more than a common slur. If you have social media or even get on the internet, then I know you've seen this. People talk about and make jokes about God like he's just another man, something you would joke around with your buddy, kind of call him, you know, give him little nicknames or whatever. And uh, But they downplay God's name and make light of it. And I'm not just talking about atheists trying to get under uh, Christian skin by calling God names. There's people in today's world that claim to be religious that do the same thing as jokes trying to get a laugh out of people. And trust me, I love jokes. I'm sure everyone knows that I love a good pun and a good dad joke. But there's just some things that you shouldn't joke about. And God is one of them. A lot of people use God's name in vain out of ignorance because maybe it was a phrase or saying they heard growing up or heard other people saying and didn't really think much about it. And I'm sure that's a lot of con there's a lot of people today. They don't know what right from wrong and they don't know that these maybe phrases are saying are really putting God's name down. And I'm sure we've all been in that boat at some time using a phrase that we didn't really understand or didn't really think fully of what the meaning implied to. But it's our duty to examine ourselves and to make the corrections when we need to. We see expressions today used such as, oh my God and oh my gosh, are ones that are flippantly used without meaning whatsoever. People don't really think about the meaning. It's just the filler phrase. People say, oh my Lord, Jesus, golly, geez, gee whiz, oh my word, oh my goodness, and many other expressions that have their origin in the reference to God and those things are holy. Again, people are taking those things which are holy and bringing it down to the common level and using it flippantly. Just listen to the phrases of other people uh, that they use as exclamations when something goes wrong or they stub their toe or they're trying to make a point. And reflect on these and how they're used and see if even us, if we use any of these flippantly, making that which is holy common. Words that have their origin with reference to God, Jesus, the goodness of God, or anything that is holy. 
Those who invoke God's name in an oath without intending to follow it through God's name or through that take God's name in vain. Let me read that again. Those who invoke God's name in an oath without intending to follow through with that oath take God's name in vain. I'm sure we've all heard people say this phrase and it gets under my skin when I hear it. But people say, oh, I swear to God. You'll ask them something. They'll say, oh, I, I swear to God I didn't do that. And they're flippantly using God's name in this. And as we've seen, oaths were to be taken seriously by God. And God does take every oath seriously. In Leviticus 19 and verse 12, And ye shall not swear by my name falsely, neither shalt thou profane the name of the Lord thy God, I am the Lord. In Deuteronomy chapter 23, verses 21 through 22, it reads, When thou shalt vow a vow unto the Lord thy God, Thou shalt not slack to pay it, for the Lord thy God will surely require it of thee, and it would be sin in thee. But if thou shalt forbear to vow, it shall be no sin in thee. Let's also consider some New Testament pr principles in this regard. Jesus himself taught clearly that we are not to make frivolous oaths. In Matthew chapter 5, starting in verse 33, it reads, Again, ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but thou shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But I say unto you, Swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. But let your but let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. People of that time were trying to get around the commandments, such as Numbers 30 and verse 2 we read earlier. If a man vow a vow unto the Lord or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceedeth out of his mouth. The people at the time were trying to get around these kind of oaths and they would swear by other things instead of swearing to the Lord. They would swear such as to the heavens or their own life. That way they wouldn't have to keep what they said. And Jesus told them not to swear by any of these because they were just flippantly saying it and not keeping these oaths. It's like people today you hear say, oh, I swear on my mother's grave or I swear on my life to make emphasis that they're not lying. James reiterates this in James chapter 5 and verse 12. But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by earth, neither by any other oath, but let your, but let your yea be yea and your nay nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. We also need to keep in mind respect and honor for God at all times. This is what it comes down to is how our view of God is. If we truly honor and uphold his name and uphold God as the creator of all things, then why would we even want to disgrace him or to bring down his name any? We should, as Christians, want to exalt his name to the fullest. In Colossians 4, 6, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Ephesians 4, verses 29 says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And certainly, we don't want to blaspheme God's good name, 2 Timothy, 2, or 2 Timothy 3 and verse 2. So what are the consequences of the command that was given in the law of Moses? The consequence of violating this command was that God would not hold one guiltless. That is to say, one who uses God's name in vain was guilty and will be punished. Leviticus chapter 24 verses 10 through 16 sets forth an example of what God had those who use God's vain, name in vain by cursing. For failing to follow through with an oath, one was held guilty and had to present a guilt offering to the Lord. Leviticus 5 verses 4 through 6. Jesus also pronounced consequences upon vain or empty words used. 
Matthew chapter 12, verses 36 through 37. But I say unto you that every idle word which men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy word shalt thou be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. On judgment day, we're going to be given account to God by every word that we use. Those fill-in words that people use, those phrases that people use, and that we, maybe some of us use. Every single word that we use, God's going to bring up on judgment day. So will we be justified by those or will we be condemned by them? This leads us to the concept that the guilty will be punished. But we have, however, the opportunity for forgiveness today. We know sins can be forgiven through the blood of Christ and baptism. Acts 2, verse 38, and Acts twenty two sixteen. 16. That's where our sins are washed away. After we hear the word and we believe it, we repent of our sins and confess them to Christ. Once we're baptized to become a Christian, those sins are forgiven. And for those who are already Christians, sins can be, get, get, be forgiven through confession of fault and prayer to God. 1 John 1, 9. So how are we supposed to look at God and his name? We are given an example on how to pray by Jesus himself, in which he tells us how we are to address God. In Matthew 6, verse 9, it says, And after this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. It's that honor that we're supposed to give God. Proverbs 18 and verse 10 says, And the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it, and it is safe. Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 and 11 says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, of things in the earth, for things that are in the heaven and things in earth, and things under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. In that judgment day, every single person that has lived and that is currently living will confess Jesus' name. They will exalt the name of Jesus to where it's supposed to be. But for many, that's going to be too late. We need to make the decision today that we are going to uphold the name of Jesus. We're going to give him his name, the respect and honor that it needs. So in conclusion... We want to see how is our attitude towards God. And like I said earlier, this is what it comes down to. If you don't care about God, then you probably won't care about any of the words that's in his Bible that we've read tonight. Do we take God seriously? That's the problem with the world around us. And you see people flipp flippantly using his names and making jokes about him. They really don't take God seriously. It's just kind of there in the back of their mind, but they really don't think about who God is and wanting to please God. So let us remember not to take the God's name in vain, not to make vain oaths, and not to blaspheme God, and also not to bring God down to the common level. Thank you for your attention, and we'll now end with a prayer. Dear God, our almighty, holy, heavenly Father, dear Father, we come before you this evening as a grateful and thankful people. We're so thankful for the opportunity that we have to live here in America and to enjoy all the various blessings and this technology that we're able to gather this evening on Zoom to study a portion of thy word. Dear Father, we truly are a blessed people and we pray that we will never forget those things. Dear Father, we pray that we will always hold your name high. We will always honor it. We will never bring it down to the common level, to man's level, how others do. But we will truly respect your name. Dear Father, we do pray for those at this time who are sick and afflicted. We pray you will be with Miss Gail and you will be with Brother David and all those others who are sick at this time. We pray you'll comfort them as only you can and restore them back to a portion of health as you see fit. Dear Father, we're thankful for the recent rains and all it does for the earth, replenishing it and helping the nature grow. We're thankful for 
the freedoms we enjoy in this nation. We're thankful for our servicemen and women who fight for those freedoms daily to keep us safe. And we're thankful for our first responders who are also keeping us safe. And we pray you'll watch over them, keep them safe, and be with their families. To Father, most of all, we thank for Jesus the Christ who selflessly came down to this earth, lived as a man, and did so sinlessly. Dying on that cross and going through that torture and shedding his blood that we might have the forgiveness or remission of our sins. And all these things we ask, not our will, but thy will be done. As in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.